Hello, I'm Kelly Swoop with your WMAR 2 News Update. 37-year-old Theatra Bowens, Baltimore's first murder victim in 2020. It happened inside a home on Chesterfield Avenue in Northeast Baltimore. Baltimore police say that Bowman was stabbed to death. An 18-year-old was also injured. When police arrived on the scene, they found both Bowman and their suspect, who was also suffering from stab wounds. He remains in police custody tonight. Police are looking for a person who robbed a man, then set him on fire. It happened this morning at the intersection of McEldery and Glover Streets in East Baltimore. A 59-year-old man told police that someone robbed him of his wallet and headphones, then threw some form of liquid on the back of his head, causing him to catch fire. He was rushed to the hospital for treatment. A man is charged with impersonating a police officer, and investigators are looking for other potential victims. Montgomery County Police say Kareem Hart used a security car to pull a man over and demand $50 in exchange for not writing a $250 ticket. It happened last Saturday in the White Oak Shopping Center parking lot. Investigators say Hart drove a Nissan Versa with an Allied security written on it. He is now out on bond. If you've come into contact with Hart or know someone who has, call police. Take what you need, leave what you can. That's what the Blessing Box is all about. It's an effort by Aberdeen Police to help those in need in its community. Right now, there is a Blessing Box at the police station. The department is asking anyone to stop by and drop off food, toiletries and clothes, while also encouraging those who are homeless to take what they need. It's an idea that started with Officer Corey Leitner. I saw on social media that there was a Blessing Box, a guy put outside for uh, homeless and people in need, and I thought it would be a good idea to implement here uh, in Aberdeen. If you want help or if you are in need of supplies, the Blessing Box is accessible 24-7. And I'm tracking some mild temperatures for the start of the day, but some slippery roadways and showers are going to move into the area overnight and linger through the day tomorrow. You're going to see some breaks during the afternoon, but for the most part, it will be much of a soggy day. But those breaks will allow those temperatures to climb into the mid to upper 50s, depending on where you are for tomorrow. Now, as we extend out that forecast, temperatures do hover in the 50s through your Saturday, but it's going to be rainy, heavy at times, especially in the afternoon. That's all going to clear out on Sunday. We could see a few passing flurries early in the morning, and then we're going to be left with some cooler numbers and some windy temperatures, uh, windy conditions lingering through your Monday and into your Tuesday, where our next system brings another chance of wintry precip on Tuesday. By Wednesday and Thursday, temperatures return to their seasonal norms. Stick with us online at WMER2news.com for updates on top stories and breaking news. And for news and weather while you're on the go, download the WMER2 app in your app store. You can check out our live radar and get breaking news sent straight to your phone. Thanks for watching. I'm Kelly Swoop. This WMAR2 News update is sponsored by Jones Junction.